So uh, yes, yeah, so we'll we'll kick it off. Um, kicking off the May first meeting to um, with the really it's the day of town meeting. The topic is general discussion around FY twenty four budget and or any annual town meeting articles that impact the Medfield Public Schools or Medfield School Committee. Um, so uh, first off, can I um, see and hear who's here? Michelle Kirkby here. Kristen Simonini here. Phil Horn here. And Tim Knight here. And Leo is not arrived yet. Correct. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, as far as public input, um, right now, unless is there anybody uh, who's not uh, on the school committee or administration in the room uh, that would like to take public input? Or I don't see anybody on the Zoom. Is there anybody yet, else yeah. in the room? Yeah, it's just Jeff, here, it's, um... Jeff, Mike, uh, and Andrea in the room with us. Okay, so there's no public input. Uh, um, so, okay, why don't we uh, kick it off? One again, sorry, I'm not there. There's some crazy circumstances that have that. And thank you, Michelle, for um, taking on more than uh, you may have expected. No problem. Um, so I think there's two two primarily primary topics um, that we want to just make sure, um, ha has there been any change? And the one is budget. And um, I, I guess I mean, those are the, the two topics. There may be a little bit of explaining procedurally what will be happening as well. Um, but uh, budget wise, um, I, I'll ask Jeff or Michael, have you guys heard of any changes or any um, anything that might be different around the budget that we've already voted in? No, Tim, everything else has stayed the same. What was approved by the Warren Committee, what you guys voted in and what's in the Warren has stayed. Okay, all right. And procedurally on that, I mean, I don't think there's, I think there may be some questions that come up, um, whether it be, you know, from the floor or, or from, you know, others. And uh, I believe Michael uh, would probably be well-equipped where appropriate to address some and or Michelle, is that correct? Depending on what they are. We're good. Okay, all right. Uh, so, and then the second um, topic is the, um, you know, the topic that we talked about on April 14th, uh, or was that April 13th? I just don't have a number uh, in front, but in our last meeting around Article 28, and if you look in the packet, you have a fair amount there. Let me just pull that up. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to click back on to um, Andrea's note. It seems like. So um, one, we have the warrant that's in the printed book that everybody has um, for the citizens petition, which is article number 28. Um, we've already discussed that as a group. Uh, we, Christine and I, uh, or Kristen and I, sorry, Kristen, Okay. Um, also sp spoke to the warrant committee, answered a bunch of questions that they had. Uh, they definitely appreciated the legal input that we had shared. And um, just that, that that was a, a public meeting, so, so everyone's aware. So as I understand, or, and then the warrant committee then voted on that, and um, they voted unanimously to dismiss it. Um, Tim, Leo, so you have 610. I'm sorry. Uh, Leo, Leo has arrived. Six ten. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So um, they voted unanimously to dismiss it. This is my understanding of of what happens when when that occurs. Um, when that occurs, I think it goes back down to the sponsor of the article to see if they um, 
want to still bring it forward or if they would want to amend the petition. And um, I, I have spoken with the moderator. I said, I, gee, I don't totally understand that. Highest level, they, you know, that's not unusual. If something may get amended, it, it's not unusual that then um, it may be adjusted from the floor. I think highest level, Scott would look at it and say, hey, it's it's got to be representative of the same issue, right? It, it shouldn't, you can't just change it uh, dramatically. Um, and that's where it's Scott, it, that this is where I, I eventually have, um, I'm a little confused. I don't have perfect clarity because it's really up to the sponsor what may happen. Um, but what Scott had had shared, he said, hey, there's this might be revised language that I think in some ways, um, you know, he said he had shared that. He said, how would you feel about that? And, uh, you know, does that change the school committee's position? And the substantive point there was, and this is from memory. Maybe I'll pull it up. So give me one second. Um, I'm sorry for the delay with this. Just so I'm clear, Tim, he asked you if this revised language would change our opinion. Is that the exact question he asked you? Yeah, let me let me just make sure I, I get it. Does this school committee have officially an updated amended version of this? That's what I'm saying. It's a little out of turn to have him ask you what how we feel without being able to deliberate over it. Yeah, yeah I know. So it's it's um that's where it it became confusing. He, he I, so so there was you know there was um, discussions with with Scott. You know what happens when something is dismissed? What does the process look like? And I raised a concern. I said, what concerns uh, you, you me? You know, representing the committee, and I think me is my own experience as a citizen, as a citizen in some of these meetings. Is this, this is a highly nuanced set of topics you know that that has some cases they're legal things and if there are amendments from the floor it would help to understand what they would look like um you know part of it the the way the article is written part of what the warrant committee said was if they're asking uh, to change the charter the petition would have been needed to be filed six months ago, which didn't occur. So, and, and this, I, I'm paraphrasing, so I, hopefully I'm, I'm doing it accurately. We had the um, town attorney weigh in on it and that would be, you know, it didn't follow due process, which could be considered out of order, according to the moderator. Um, but it, the way it was written originally, and it's, it's in the packet or change the bylaws, and the, the legal opinion is it would not get through the attorney general's office if it were to change the bylaws. So what the uh, town attorney said was they could still bring it forward. They would be bringing forward something that is not enforceable. And I don't think Scott necessarily felt great about that. So there was a, there was a, the concept was if it was a non-binding petition, for us to study, um, I think it was public input, which is BED, uh, BEDG and what's in our, in our packet, as well as public forums, which is BEE. -E. The ask was, would the committee study it and pay special attention to the number of citizens that would have to sign a petition? Um, for us to then conduct a forum. So, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Let's go ahead. I don't, I, this is because it's a confusing topic. I want to make sure it's, it's understood. Uh, go ahead, finish up because. Yeah, it was like, you know, as I, as I talked to him, I said, well, Scott, it, 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 you know, there is a process to follow to bring this forward. So if, it, if we are asking to change the charter, and the town attorney said, well, it needs to be processed six months before, and that didn't happen. You know, 
why aren't you dismissing it? That was the question. Well, and I think it was really kind of more, well, if this is a non-binding petition with a similar ask, I don't have how the would meeting. the committee feel about it? Yes, yeah, so we, don't, we, don't we weren't allowed time to, and I think that needs to be said tonight too, Scott, in front of everybody. Yeah, is, is there new language though? No, yes. Not that we've been given. Not, not we've been given. given. Supposedly she's going to pitch new language she's tonight. Gonna she's going to amend on the floor, floor, which you can do. Um, if we have 150 people, so you will say that we haven't had time to sit and deliberate about, about that's this. right. And then the, the other thing, but before we even get to that, yeah. like the original, it's it's contra it's contradicted right in the opening petition where it's talking about chapter 10 of a board's commissions, committees, and councils. It should apply to all, right? It shouldn't just be applying to us, it should apply to warrant board of selectmen. Like, if I get 25 signatures and I want the board of selectmen to meet on something, then I'm going to get 25 signatures. and Boy, I'm going to keep them busy. So, and I think that's um, I think that's the very first opening point that needs to be brought up uh, in public because I think other people may have had a may have had a beef over this. There's been plenty of projects in town that they wish they could have gotten planning together, like when they were trying to stop that restaurant from going in that old house next to the Peak House. You know, that was a big contention. And then there's others as well. So, I think that. Right out of the gate, I think we have a you know a standing argument to make about that why it's only singling out the school committee, um, and then obviously the crippling effect it will have as an as just as it's written because this is all we can go on right. Now. All right, what will just confuse the matter more is then when she comes up and tries to amend it, and that's what's gonna and that's what we want. We want the confusion. So in my opinion, because it's pretty straightforward about you know what this person's looking for if we know the history. And then the last point is the opinion that was allowed to go through in the summary down below. So in the very last sentence, there's an opinion in, made in there uh, that should have disqualified this right from the beginning. So anyway, those are my points that I think need to be stated publicly, whether they're, I know you prepared a statement, I believe, and, but I'm, uh, you probably don't want me to, but be, I'd be happy to do so. So my understanding of the way it's going to happen right now is Scott will read, read it as is, right? The warrant committee, I think, will then read their uh, majority report, right, where they unanimously voted to dismiss this. Well, that, that'll be next, right, Tim? And then it'll go to the petitioner to see if she wants to read her own statement or possibly amend. Then we will have time to speak our statement. Then he will open it to proponents and opponents on the floor. So that might be where the part, if, if you feel like that still needs to be said, sure. just because I don't have those specific things in here, but there might be other things that, I don't know, that come out that need to be said. I, I have been trying to ask people to come and speak against this. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that turns out. But um, so that's my understanding of kind of the flow of how this is gonna work. At that same point in time, Scott does have the authority to dismiss this completely for being out of order. I don't know if he will or not, but he does have the authority to do that. Has anyone joined our meeting yet, by the way? They have not in the room, Tim. I can't see online. No. Really? So, and yet, yeah, folks, I, I, um, that was the area, I'll just be, be um, direct, <laughs> was, is that motion formally proposed? And that's the part that he, he you know, is, is not crystal clear to me. So I think that's where, you know, this the spirit of it to me, it, it was the same ask. It was a very similar ask, let me say, and I can I can I do have it and I can, I can read it, but it would it, it really had the same issues that uh, we had. Now again, that could change. I don't know what the motion would become. So I I, I think it, it was he was doing his best to clarify what the motion would be. So I think at a high level, Maybe. if it changes on the fly, the short answer is that any participating committees need a chance to go back and have the time to review any changes. So nobody would be in a position to make a, a decision in the moment. But I would further say that the number of signatures was not the primary nor only sticking point of the group past discussion. So I don't think if that were the, the fundamental piece to change uh, in the moment that it still wouldn't negate the other um, arguments against the petition. So I think 
it doesn't change much either way. And we, we can't guess right now because we don't know what's going to happen. Right. So, so, and that's what, um, cause he did. And, and I, I spoke to him again yesterday. He said, look, I, this is the last conversation or, you know, this was language that I discussed with the sponsor of the article and it was moved it through a non-binding resolution. And what, what a non-binding resolution does is it's no longer out of order for not being asked to, you know, I guess the non-binding resolution doesn't have that six month topic. Town meeting asked school committee to amend its public partition, it, but it was very direct, to amend its public participation policy, BEDH and or public hearing policy, BEE, to allow for a specified number of community members as it deems appropriate to request a hearing on an issue within school committee purview and to set the steps and re requirements necessary to provide due notice in line with other public hearings that are mandatory for school committee. So um, the, in, in the, the conversations that we had with Warren committee and the conversations that we had as a, as a committee on the April, you know, April, I think 13 meeting, it, the, the, the change is it's a non, it's a non-binding resolution, but they are specifically asking us to amend policy. We have, even it's in our packets, we have the legal um, opinion from the school attorney saying, look, that's outside the jurisdiction of town, of town meeting. So it's a recommendation to amend policy. And I, I just said, in, in, nothing changed in terms of what the ask is, right? They're asking us to change policy. Hold on, Tim. Tim you? That's got something. Hold on, Tim. I just just wanted to put in there for the record that uh, the the memo that I put together today that highlights all the times that BEDH has been on the school committee agenda and how many times you've taken public comment on that. Numerous times. It began in November, um, and then you guys, I think, did your final your final vote uh, a few months after that, but it's it's pretty much, um, it's it's in there and there's been a lot of public comment and opportunities for public in input. I, I'd like to just bring to your attention on BEDH-E, there is a provision within that policy already, the school committee has voted on and approved, that does state that if, if they deem something, um, deem something to, to have further conversation and they can call a, public hearing or public forum on that. It's explicitly written in the policy already. So I don't understand the direction of whatever this motion is because you already have it in your policies. And not just that, we approved this on January 26th of this year. Yeah. Anyone else does the other citizens petitions? So for this one, we is there anything more that we can actually do on this right now? I mean, What's out there as it's been published is what we've all seen and commented on. If there's a revision to that, we don't have it. We don't know what it is. We can't really comment any further at this time. So well, we can well, openly I, respond as citizens on the floor. I'm as sorry. citizens, yes. yes. Not as a committee. Yes. Correct. No, I'm still going to read the statement, I think. Yes. You're so I meant to change it. You're reacting to the original. But everybody else here is, yeah. is first and foremost a citizen of this town and a taxpayer. And right. You get the right to respond to saying that. Yeah. Even if you support it, you can go up there and say that. So, and Jeff, I was just reading BEDH. I'm sorry for this, just, just to jump in there. That, that is accurate, but that, that's, they may ask for a meeting to be uh, a topic to be put on the agenda. Correct? If, and uh, it's in everyone's packet. EDH E, it says, in addition, if the committee believes an issue requires a dialogue with the school district community, the committee may schedule a separate public hearing on that issue. It's already in your policy that you approved in January. So I, don't, I, I just don't understand. I don't know what the non binding resolution is going to actually either. do. I don't either it's because it's already chaos. there. What's that? It's going to cause more chaos and confusion. Yeah, when we get to it. No, just in general, no. it passes. Oh, this? Yeah. Well, this it has to be approved, and then it has to go to the legal process. No, it's a motion, not an article. Yeah. A motion, a non-binding oh. non motion 
means oh, oh. that don't have to take action on. No, I get that, right? No, I meant it as is, but <clears throat> obviously it's doing what the person usually does. But again, getting to the heart of it, we just want to make sure as a committee, and I, again, going back since we've got a lot of less than a year, just at a year kind of people, no one has any recollection nor evidence of a request formally being made to add something to a committee agenda that was ever declined. That's at the heart of what this is, right? Public so, hearing. No one's been denied. Well, that's what the well, board yeah. is. It is a public hearing, which means there's a, yeah, there's a bigger... I understand, but it's being asked for because the petitioner says that they have requested things be part of but, well, well, or not. Yes. So there's a little more to it, which we, we discussed. I mean, that is the, that may be the driver for the request. But you want to think about that request. If, if we, for example, BEDH as a policy, we went through a lengthy review and we approved it. If somebody said, hey, I would like that policy to be put on the agenda at next week's meeting, it, it undermines the authority. We, we, we spent an enormous amount of time to get to the point of it was approved. So it, you know, and, and I, I just look at it and I say, it could be this citizen or whoever the sponsor is is requesting it because they want it on this specific topic. They didn't like it. And there's been plenty of topics over the years that we're not gonna get unanimous agreement with the general public, with our you know, citizens. So good. If, if there's a number of people who don't like the decision that we made, they could put bring together the X number of people and say, put that back on the agenda. And that's it that to me is at the heart of the matter is we no longer can control those agendas. You know, it's the open no. hearing. It's not just an agenda item. Yeah. Or, or an open hearing. So I, I, wanna, I wanna just frame it for people who haven't gone through an open hearing. And we had more of them during the pandemic than ever, okay? So if you ever attended any of them, which you may have, where you had 300 people and everyone got their chance at that open hearing. An open hearing means that you can't like, like there's no real end time. There's no end. Yeah, I mean, you can end it. I mean, the chair can end it. And it, ultimately the chair did end that meeting after four and a half hours or maybe mm -hmm. it was a long meeting. But that was a, that's one example, which is extreme. We've had them on standard-based reporting. We've had them on the school building, you know, project. You know, we've had it so that people can come and speak on certain very large items that are gonna impact the entire school district mm -hmm. or even the town from that perspective. But that is what this, Particular person is calling for it. And they, they feel, the person who's put this together feels as though that the change, and honestly, the language change, the process change was so slight, <laughs> uh, it, it actually took to zero power away. It just, all the real change was is we could have a consent agenda and we didn't have to take comment after every single item. And that's what the consent agenda did. Because otherwise, we had to take open hearing on every item, but the consent agenda. Well, was, yeah, we had to take. That was really a change in my eyes on that policy. Other than that, there was no real method of change. And as a matter of fact, we're extremely open as far as a school committee goes on two way communication. We may have dialed the back a smidgen because of certain folks that show up every time. However, my opinion, I have found it very open to answer open ended questions in meetings which you don't find everywhere. I don't know if you've been to a Wellesley meeting and seen that there, they probably are very strict, like Newton was, like you had the three minutes, nobody responded on the committee. Here, we respond, we ask for extra feedback, we ask extra questions. And I feel so, like so, one of the factors- yeah, I, think, I just wanna be cl clarifying, Not holding depending on the topic, right? Like oh, you, like there are certain topics where we, it just, it, it happens that we need to be more, like, hey, this requires, there's enough people who are showing up. This is a hot topic. Maybe we're going to have a dialogue. Um, as a general rule, it's public input. We appreciate that input. And then based on that input, we might, it might choose, hey, we probably want to put that on an agenda at a future date. As, a, as an example, so that doesn't have to get to that point, was, you know, the masks. When we decided to remove the masks, like it was a big agenda item. We knew people were going to come and speak on it. 
And so we allotted time and the agenda, room on the agenda, to allow more time for people to speak their concerns. Like that's what, you know, that's what was decided to do. And knowing that there was going to be a lot of public input showing up to this, it wasn't necessarily deemed an open hearing, but we adjusted the meeting specifically for that. We did that in the fall. They spoke for an hour and a half about the books and right. uh, Rocky Woods, 90 okay. minutes of public comment. I, it wasn't I mean, an open hearing, but it was 90 minutes of public comment. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, my opinion on this hasn't changed. Sorry, my voice. I was at soccer fields all weekend. But yeah, I, uh, I've not been here long enough uh, to have all the information that you all have. But at the end of the day, like Jeff said, we have the ability to have a hearing. I hope in this job, I will want to have a hearing for something that is that big. If another pandemic comes, we will want to have a hearing. We will do our best to hear from everybody. Um, so or that, something else. I mean, not a pandemic, right? Like No, no, anything. Yeah, yeah, but anything yeah. where we think the town is so divided or there's so much information that we need to have a hearing, we will do that. Or we'll have for all Correct. Myself. Like, I'm not, I just, so, this, I, like we're just, I understand people have been here longer, so I don't mean no, to like, no. discount feelings or whatever. But like, I'm sorry, I, I just want to say I stand in the same spot. I think this takes power away from us. And I think in this role, I want to hear from as many community members as possible, and we'll do my best to do that. Uh, That's a good summary, because it, it, in that, I think even the example, if the motion, the amended motion is to talk about BEDH, the sponsor of the article raised several things during public input that we did consider and adjust it. So like to me, I'm, I agree, Will, we can always do better, right? We can always, there's always going to be somebody who is out there. So I'm not saying we're done. I'm saying procedurally, if a week later we have 28 signatures say, can you please hold a hearing to talk about this? Or for example, with the masks, they didn't, somebody didn't like the outcome and they ask us to hold that meeting. We have to open the schools the next day. Right. So there is a cer certain time and a place. That's why Mass General Law says, look, you control that. Right. right. And, and that's the core issue. Now, non binding or binding or non binding, maybe it's this year, it's these two policies. And then next year, it's, hey, we suggest you look at these nine policies. It's, it's just very dangerous. It's, yeah, it's, you know, I, I, also, coming from the point that, like, I read all this stuff today, and, like, uh, I appreciate. I think all of Michelle's work and you and Kristen's work with the work committee, I just, uh, like our talks to Brady, like, do I need to know anything else that I can help with tonight? Or are we just like, like the, the legality of it isn't great. How it was written, the first warrant committee re reason, it's asking for like two things at once that aren't even possible. So to me, the whole thing is like, like what Kristen said, like how it's written, is not good. We don't want it. The warrant committee doesn't want it. The lawyer says it's not legal. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. No, I, it's great. And, and I think that was just, we wanted to make sure yeah, I, there's awareness so that if, you know, and that's how I felt. I said, look, if I look back at the comments from everybody in April, you know, the April meeting, nothing's changed. I, yeah. you know, I think it's important though that where everyone's aware and we've met as a body and we, you know, we, Michelle will be the spokesperson for this, obviously. And that's the, that's, we haven't changed our opinion. Sure. And you're like, you're comfortable with your statement, ready to rock. Yeah. Cool. And like you, you said, we're allowed to talk. So like, sure. if it gets out of hand or I don't know, if people start going the other way, like I'll stand up and talk, you know, and we'll do our thing. Hopefully we don't have to. Like, yeah, I agree. I, yeah. Maybe it'll just get, Maybe a sponsor won't break up again. Yeah, I mean, in general, Michelle's talking on behalf of the body. Okay, perfect. And and that's the part where it's just unknown to me what might happen with a citizen, you know, with if the amendment changes on the floor. And that's where other folks can. As a school committee member, though, I mean, anybody can come forward and say, you know, hey, Will, speaking as an individual. Sure. Gotcha. Right? That, that's... Um, yeah. So we're out there. So um, no, I, I thank you. I know this sounded like a long discussion for something that you know um, hasn't changed and we're not certain about. But it was um, 
th that's the best knowledge that I have about you know what the amendment would be. That's what the the Warren Committee, as as I understand it, is also aware. Of. That's what the amendment would be. Uh, the amended motion, and that's we'll see um, if that if that's if that's the case. Are there any other topics? Um, so this is a weird one since it's before the school committee. I'm um, excuse me, before town meeting, and it's a public meeting, but nobody actually has attended is attending. Uh, but we're recording it. It's a public meeting. Um, so the last time we we had to review the minutes for the prior meeting and approve those. But I don't know that we have the minutes from the prior meeting. So yeah, we, we just. Like a yeah. weird interstitial meeting. So, just, we can host okay. a meeting. Yeah. But we can host <laughs> I'm not sure meeting. how to think about this one. Just we, we can host a meeting um, on anything that comes up, in, and we have three days, three business days to post it. Um, so if something comes up, and, or if we think something's going to come up, this always gets posted in the event that we need to discuss last minute changes on the budget uh, or anything of those of that nature. Or if there's something else happening, like, like I, I hate to use the pandemic. We all we we put one on the books every week, whether we needed it or not, and then posted it and then pulled it down if we didn't feel like it was necessary. You answered my question. Was the next meeting is we'll review the minutes from the last. Yeah, meeting. yeah, it'll be a normal business meeting. This is just in the event that so that it sounds like Michelle's talking to. Yeah, got it. I just love reading. Okay. Punishment. <laughs> there was some committee in town that didn't approve minutes for years. I'm not a good sleeper. Maybe that's. What <laughs> Forget those mysteries. I like. paid one. Sure. Okay. Well, if there's uh, no other questions, then um, I would. Leo. Second. Michelle. Would... So move Michelle. Uh, just because I'm on Zoom, uh, Will. Oh, I agree. What did I say? Actually, someone else was you have chairing, right? No, he's chairing there right now. I'm the school. Over Zoom? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, okay. one and two? Do I need to say anything? I agree or something? Uh, no, he has to call the vote. Oh. Call yes. Vote. Yeah, all in favor. There you go. Aye. Michelle, Aye. if you want to do that from the floor. Yeah, all in favor. Aye. 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 Tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Sam. Sam. Yeah, we go.